see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction. The trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves. Did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches. Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery. Their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The flicker of humanity long extinguished within them. <laughs> yes, their numbers have dwindled through the years. But a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day, they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds! Flogged by war! The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. Some say they herald a second conjunction. Can we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh! It's the time of madness and disdain. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play through with me, your host, Tim. And today, we will begin playing through the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt together. There will be some prep here, which you can skip by going down to the comment section, where I will have a pinned comment from me allowing you to jump ahead to different parts of the video. Well, in particular, uh, where we actually start our adventure. This prep might take a few more minutes than usual. Normally, it's about five minutes to sum up the game, how far I got, what difficulty we're playing it in, and so on and so forth. But this time, there's a few more little bits of information I think you guys should probably know. We'll cover those first. So first off, you should know that I built a new computer to play this game and record it. My original computer over there in my den simply isn't powerful enough to play the game and record it at the frame rate that I want to record it at. On that note, uh, I picked up a new monitor as well, and I am recording this game at a much higher resolution than I am used to. It looks fantastic, but uh, whoo, hopefully my computer I've put together will be powerful enough to handle this. I think it will be. We'll find out when we actually start. You should know that the acoustics in this room are different than the room I normally record in. As such, my voice may be a little more echoey for this playthrough. There's not much I can do about it unless I want to convert this room into an audio studio. But I'm going to hope this will be okay. I'll check on the recording when we're done. Speaking of audio, the game has an audio glitch, which I suppose um, CD Projekt Red never addressed, and I'm experiencing it here. The audio in the cutscenes 
will be lower than what it is in the normal game. The intro video we just saw, odds are I probably fiddled with it by doing some audio editing after it had been recorded. I can do that for all the cutscenes in the game, but I can only really do it if I'm allowed to start and stop the video when I recognize a cutscene is playing in front of us. If hitting a button will cancel the cutscene, I am not willing to do audio on it because I would like to get all the cutscenes recorded. So what does this mean? Well, it means that after I'm talking right now, there might be a little bit of another clip, which, well, not right now, but after I'm done with this prep and I go and check on my audio, there might be another few second, a few second video of me after I've played through a little bit of the tutorial telling you whether or not I've been successful at splitting the audio from the cutscenes into different sections. If I am successful, then I'm willing to put in the work it requires to make it enjoyable for you guys to watch the cutscenes at a better volume. If not, then unfortunately, well, I guess we'll all have to suffer with slightly less volume on them. I apologize. I could fix it as well by having uh, this hack, which people have recommended in, but that hack would basically increase the volume of everything I do in this game, including my voice, by 100%. It was going to be blasting through your speakers at unbelievable levels. I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay, so that is the little differences here. It's another, uh, so let's talk about The Witcher 3 itself. You should know that I never beat this game. I don't think I even got halfway through it. I can probably say this without ruining anything. I believe at some point in the game, we will have to, we will get a choice between two different girls that we might be, uh, Geralt would, I suppose, be willing to throw his lot in with. I never got to that point. I've heard, I've heard it happens in the game, never reached that far. My Geralt, when I was playing this game about a year ago, he ended his adventures at about level 18 or so. So I didn't even see half of what was in the game. I also own the Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine expansion, and I have not played either of them. So I didn't even walk into these zones, so I have no idea what's awaiting us there. So I intend to do as much as possible, and hopefully we'll find it all enjoyable. You should know that I intend to play the game on hard, which is the second, high, uh, second highest difficulty level. A gentleman named, uh, what is it that guy up to now, I believe is his YouTube handle, uh, left me a link showing me an awesome mod for the game called The Witcher 3 Enhanced Edition. I took a look at it, and it's very interesting, and I love the ideas that are in it. But, because I'm going to be rusty at the game, and because I think I should probably play through it once without the mod first, at least I want to sink more hours into it to get used to it, I will not be playing with that mod in this playlist. This one will be just a pure game, Hearts and Stone Expansion Pack, and the Blood and Wine Expansion. And we'll see how well we do. Um, maybe later on down the road, a year or two from now, we'll play through the game again, and or I'll show a little bit of the Enhanced Edition off. Thank you, sir. I do intend to, to play the game with it, just not for this playlist. Not at least at the start, so I get the hang of what's going on in the game. Uh, I think that's really about it, everybody. Oh, right. Down in the comment section, in that pink comment from me, I will also provide a link to the video where I cover the survey results from the Witcher 3 survey I put out some months ago. So that way I don't have to repeat all the options we had. You just go and watch that if you want a quick refresher. All right, everybody. I think that will do it. I'm off to check out my, vo my voice. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. I'm back. It's been three days since I recorded the first intro bits of this. And I have uh, two more statements to make before we hit a new game. Number one, I talked in for some time about not wanting to install any mods for the game, at least for this initial playthrough. And then I went and grabbed a mod, uh, which I think might or might not work. I've grabbed the Absolute Camera mod. I didn't want anything to adjust the difficulty settings until I have a t had a time to play the game for a little bit more. And so the Absolute Camera mod will just let me set, I believe, the camera to different levels, maybe behind my shoulder, like what I was used to playing for The Witcher 1, which eh, I like doing that when I'm walking around in towns and what have you. So you should expect me to be running that. And also, uh, it wasn't too difficult for me to do the audio on the last part of this video, uh, the, like the intro video, the intro cutscene here. 
Assuming that the cutscenes allow me to hit buttons without skipping them, then this will be really easy to do. It will add like another 10-15 minutes um, for my time to do the video editing per uh, per cutscene, but whatever. It's That way we all get the experience that we want, rather than all of us being kind of upset in some way with the audio. I'm beginning to babble now. We're all set to begin our game, so let's go ahead and start. We have to choose what we want to play. Fresh start here will be everything. Uh, the Witcher 3's main storyline, Hearts of Stone, and Blood of Wine. So, we'll pick fresh start. Next, the difficulty setting. I really wish it just said normal, hard, or what have you. But this is easy. This is normal. This is hard. This is super hard. This lets you go back to the last menu. I'm going to select Blood and Broken Bones. I'm going to be really rusty at the start, and you should expect get my Geralt to get beat up by the first few things that we encounter, and I might die. But it's the only way I'm going to get better, is if I challenge myself to play it this way again. I did find Sword of Story and Sword to be too easy once I was done with the tutorial section. And I found Blood Book of Bones to be, oh, perfect for me. So let's go ahead and select this. Uh, I'm fine leaving the, the tutorials on, so we'll get pop-ups, which I'll read. Oh, and the Simulate Witcher 2 save. I think this is asking me... Uh, I'm going to have to check on this really fast. We'll be right back again. Um, this is asking me if I want to have the official, quote, ending of The Witcher 2 be brought over into this game. Uh, I actually asked you guys a series of questions instead back on the survey. So I think I want this off, but I'm going to go and double check really fast. Ah, good thing I checked, everybody. We actually want on, not off. Uh, that's kind of backwards, in my opinion. But uh, if we have it uh, selected as on, we will be asked a series of questions from someone later on in the game. And we will answer these questions according to the survey results. All right, let's go ahead and start our adventure.
You know I don't find that amusing. It wasn't meant to amuse, but to prod you to hurry. It's midday already. You promised Siri you'd train with her. Go before Vesemir bores her to death with those etchings. So, later then. Hmm. See you later. Hello everyone, and welcome to the tutorial for Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Yep, this will go over a bunch of information that I need to remember because it's been a long time since I played the game. Well, let's take over the role of Geralt. My god, this looks really gorgeous. Okay, so the first thing we're going to figure out how to do is move around. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see our mini-map and our current objectives. We can use our Witcher senses by holding down the right mouse button. Things which Geralt can expect, which have either a store-related issue or are helpful for him for tracking something, will be glowing red. That, those blue sparkles over there indicates a key or something of very important that we care to examine or take. And yellow items are things that we can search or open. Let's go ahead and take a peek around at this stuff. You're running out of juice. I know. You might bring me some more once you're done training. Oh, looks like Yennefer's spending some time getting herself all proper looking. I guess for Geralt later on. We'll go through all her stuff, I suppose. I like listening to their uh, conversations. Lilac and gooseberries, of course. Geralt, stop fingering my toiletries. I can't help it, Yennefer. I'm sorry. They're glowing red. You know, when toiletries glow red, we have we gotta search them. Got any clothes that aren't black or white? Hmm. Undergarments. You're not wearing such at the moment, at least not colored ones. See, I thought Siri could stand to wait a little longer. It's uninstructive. Not to mention unreasonable. I don't want to be reasonable. Aha, so that's the way the wind blows. Go and train with her, then come back. It'll give me a chance to put my face on. Of all the women I've known, you're the only one who does that before. You've known many. What's it matter? Only ever thought of you. Oh, they certainly do like each other. Let's look around again. Anything else? Anything else I should ex be explaining? Geralt can put out lights with literally a snap of his fingers. The Witchers know these uh, signs, is what they're called. Very fast to cast spells, which aren't very powerful, but very easy to cast, which allows them to use them in their combat techniques. Nothing but silver. Gold clashes with my complexion. You should know that. Uh, she, that's true, actually. She wears black and white clothing. She has dark hair. Silver would look probably very good on her, and gold would look a bit too... Um, haughty? Oh, 
I love looking out here as well. Shit. Mountain pass is beautiful as ever. And I still have a 60 frame rate. 60 frames per second. That is amazing. It's so beautiful. It's like someone's training down there. Let's go down there and say hello. So, I don't know if I mentioned it to everyone, but you should know by now that I like walking everywhere in the in games I play. And we're going to do so here. So, I apologize that's annoying, but uh, I'll be walking everywhere when it comes to towns, cities, and places like this. I will be running and or jogging when it makes sense for Geralt to do so. And probably if it requires some distance to travel between places. Old Witcher's fast asleep. Ciri's disappeared somewhere, of course. She prefers practice to theory. Hmm? What? Time to wake up, Master. These lessons so boring they put you to sleep too? Damn it. Better taking notes on ghouls and owl ghouls. Wanted to rest my eyes a bit. <laughs> Making her slog through that brick? No wonder she took off. John of Bruce lacks flair, true, but he's reliable. Not like the hogwash they print nowadays. She's tackling the pendulums, right? How many times do I have to tell her? Don't train alone. It only embeds your errors. Bring our young damsel to the lower courtyard. If she wants to practice, she'll get to practice. It's not her fault that you were sleeping, Vesemir. Don't get mad at her. Why the hell not? The whippersnapper refuses to do as she's told. You like that about her? <laughs> Fine. I suppose I'm partly to blame. But this has to end. Now. Killing monsters is not something to be taken lightly. Siri must understand that if she's to become one of us. I'll see you below. See why you were so eager to practice. Strike. You're not in this circus, pirouette. Wrong. Footwork. Get down. With a flip? What do you think? All right. Take off the blindfold. You've got work to do. Your reflexes are still slow. Maybe for a witcher. Think drowners or striggers will go easy on you because you haven't undergone the mutations? Though in your shoes, I'd fear Vesemir more than any strigger. Disobeying his instructions? Unwise. Well, yes, but that book was horribly dull. I know, and you know that's no excuse. <sighs> I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Better not. Vesemir said if it does, he'll make you eat a bowl of slugs covered in salt. <laughs> you! <laughs> exactly. So you'd best behave. Come on, we'll practice with the others down below. Shall we run the walls? Aw, she wants to, uh, I guess spend some time with her father? And I could use the tutorial. Of course. Is a witcher school or an elven bathhouse? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> not if I get a head Maybe start, Siri. Fall. Right, everyone, so we're going to learn how to climb, run, and mantle on the surfaces here. 
It's been a while, but I remember it this much at least. What did I tell you about breathing? Through your mouth, in rhythm with your steps. Siri, cut it out. <laughs> I don't want to just uh, get to the very end, though. I'd like to make her think she has a chance at least, so work harder. There she is. I don't want to let her win if we, assuming we can beat her. There's no reason for that either. I win. Your legs are longer. I'll show you yet. I just need to grow a bit. <laughs> <laughs> she has a very indomitable spirit. I love that about Siri. Oh no. Vesemir's got that look. What did you expect? Anything to say for yourself, young lady? I'm very sorry, Uncle Vesemir. Young blood craves action, I understand that. But when you fight a beast, knowledge counts as much as your silver sword. At the very least, you ought to be able to tell a ghoul from an owl ghoul. By markings, like unto the Panthera tigris that in Zeracania dwells, and by the sickly paleness of its visage. Hmm. So you did read the chapter. Still, you should have asked if... But you were asleep, Uncle Vesemir. Oh, good for her. Plus, that's interesting. She knows how to read. Probably a lot more than other people do in this, uh, in this world, I suppose. Don't try to weasel your way out of this. A witcher must know how to trick his opponent. You said so yourself. Might have. But don't use my words of wisdom on Vesemir, got it? That's playing with fire. Fine, we've talked enough. Geralt, you're with me, Lambert with Eskel, Ciri with the dummy. Again? Stop groaning and grab a sword. What do you think? Should we start by reviewing the fundamentals or go right to free training? Oh, I feel kind of bad for Siri. She wants to practice against uh, a real opponent, or at least, you know, one of us who can help her train a little better. The dummy's not going to show her any errors of her that she might be making, but, oh well. <laughs> we still have to get used to it, I suppose. We'll start with the fundamentals. I could definitely use the training. Should work on the basics. Even skilled masters need to hone the fundamentals, and Siri's barely a novice. Sword, Witchers must be prepared to fight foes of all kinds, be they plate-clad knights, ethereal wraiths, or bone-crushing giants. To match the strengths and exploit the weaknesses of different enemies, witchers need to use a variety of weapons and combat techniques. The core tools of their trade are their swords, one steel for fighting humans and non-humans, the other silver for slaying monsters. Witchers have also mastered a simple form of combat magic. These signs are not as powerful as spells wielded by mages, but they can be cast very quickly, with simple one-handed gestures, making them quite useful in the heat of combat. Witchers are also adept at basic alchemy. They can brew powerful potions, blade oils, and bombs, all of which give them a keen advantage when fighting stronger or faster foes. How do I draw my sword, Vesemir? Press right to select or deselect a target. When you have a target selected, all your attacks are directed toward it. You don't have to select a target during combat, but doing so can help you focus on a specific opponent. Alright, hopefully I got my key bindings over here. I don't think I have all my mouse's bindings, but we'll see. I'm using a, a Logic Tech G700S over here. Quick cut! One, two, three! <laughs> Strong strikes now. Give Maybe it all like you got! Go. Never lock your elbow when striking, young lady. <laughs> Quick 
Done. Position, Siri. Footwork. Remember. Let's let her practice. Not bad. I mean, I'm remembering this. It's taking a bit, though. Oh, rolling. Okay. That's a longer dodge, basically. There we go. <laughs> like hearing the other two uh, talk. Pretend now, live later. Repost, strike, counter strike. Oh right, reposting requires blocking at the last possible second. Shit. Bring the day to a close, we'll go over a few witches' signs. Let's start with Quen. Siri, the Quen is sometimes called the Witcher's Shield. Now watch carefully to see why. Quen sign protects you against damage and certain critical effects. It's also it. feels way nice too powerful me, in this Geralt. game. I want to see sparks fly. Uh, one of the questions I asked was if I should even bother casting Quen during this Let's Play because it really sucks a lot of difficulty out. If I do decide to learn Quen or use it, I will keep it to a, a minimum. Igni will send out a flame around uh, out from Garrett. Garrett. Not for the Quen sign. I'd be a. He'd be on fire. Not bad. All right, Garrett. Come on. See that, Siri? Art will knock anyone or anything off balance. Destroy their rhythm. Time for Axie. Damn it. I hate this feeling. This one will stun opponents. Uh, Axie can really muddle your mind. You can also use it to perform like a uh, Witcher mind trick on Heard opponents. Now. Show her, Geralt. Yurden will place some trap symbols around Geralt. See this ship? If he walks into them, he becomes slower and more vulnerable to attacks. No bomb. Don't worry, Siri. Quen will dampen the blow. For bombs. We can hold down the middle button and then aim with it to see what's striking the target. They do arc in flight, so you have to keep that in mind. We'll be able to make all sorts of different bombs later. Uh, right now, we're going to practice a little bit against Vesemir to try to knock a little right. bit of the dust Enough. off of me. Continue training at will. Not good. My energy is in the upper left-hand corner, that yellow bar. When it's filled, I can cast spells. There's no stamina in the unmodded version of the game. Uh, so we can, ooh, we can block as much as we wish. There's a few more seconds, everyone. Had 
No, I'm good. <laughs> that should do it. Showed him, kid. Siri, get down here. <laughs> A little she devil. Soon as she's back, we'll set her to polishing all the swords at Care Morhen. Find that helmet. Siri? Make sure to find every last blade for you. What the? You all right? <laughs> Had a nightmare. About? Take forever to explain. Dawn, some way off. We've got time. Started in the guest room at Kaer Morin. I was relaxing in the tub and next to me... Tris? Yennefer. Funny, isn't it? She's never been there. Seems so real in my dream, though. Was she nagging you about something? Hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. True to life, indeed. We'll find her. I know we will. That's not what worries me. You've seen her tracks. She's at full gallop all the time. Breakneck speed through wild lands, devastated battlefields. She's in a hurry to get somewhere, or fleeing something. Either way, it means trouble of some sort. Be surprised if she wasn't in trouble. She's always poked her nose in beehives. Courtly intrigues here, mages' conspiracies there. What do you expect? Don't know. Guess I thought once we were finally reunited, things would be calm, at least for a while. Come with Yennefer? <laughs> Good luck. Hey everybody, I was muted, sorry about that. When it comes to conversation options, ones which are dark yellow will leave the current conversation options behind. This one was light yellow, not dark. So, well, I don't even remember what I just said. <laughs> we will, basically, dark yellow like this one means that this will further the conversation and we'll leave any other conversations options we had behind. In the dream, I went and found Siri. Then we trained. Those were the days. Hmm. Little she-devil. I've trained kids who were faster, stronger, but none had her character. Didn't end well, did it? Your dream. No. A wild hunt appeared, attacked Ciri. I couldn't move, stood there like a stump. It was just a dream. So for example, this will end our conversation, or let us uh, move on, and I'll lose my option to mention this item in our conversation. 
We'll pick this, though, because I think that Geralt is pouring out his heart at the moment to Vesemir. He's really worried about Ciri. That's the problem. It was more. In the past, when Ciri would appear in my dreams, something was wrong. She was in danger. We taught her how to defend herself from anything, wraiths included. Be dawning soon. Time to go. Wait! Show me the letter from Yennefer. Might have overlooked some hint in there. Didn't overlook anything. We were meant to meet in Willoughby. That's what she wrote. Meanwhile, one army or another burned the village to the ground. All we can do is follow her trail, so... Stop talking for a minute and give me the letter. Oh, how about that? It does smell of lilac and gooseberries. You were gonna read it, not sniff it. We must meet soon. Willoughby near Vizima. Hmm. Nothing else to guide us there. What's this postscript? I still have the unicorn? That's private. Very private. Aha. I understand. At least I think I do. Maybe not entirely, but. Perhaps that's for the best. Back on topic. How's it look? How far behind Yennefer are we? Two or three days. The trail's fresh. But it looks like it leads towards the main road. Could be muddled there. Wait, hear that? I hear it. I smell it. Ghouls. Life on the continent and in the Skellig... Skellige? Skellige Isles is, a, is nasty, brutish, and short. War lays waste of the land, and those it spares live in fear of the countless monsters lurking outside every town and village. Monsters are shown with a silver health bar above their heads, indicating that you should fight them with your silver sword, which Geralt drew at the moment. Oh, that stench. He's a single Gwen. Gonna be multiple enemies around. Just got another one. Okay, sorry everyone. I will probably not talk overly much against there's two opponents on the screen. That's How we lap, how, oof, how we looking so far, everyone? Gotta keep moving. Ah! That was a lucky hit on its parts. I might need your assistance here. This one ghoul. Striking opponents generates adrenaline points. Certain abilities you can acquire allow you to perform special attacks that require and consume adrenaline points. Your adrenaline points slowly decline when you are not engaged in combat. Of course. When armies pass, necrophages follow. Let's go before any more show up. You can regenerate vitality by eating or drinking or meditating for at least one hour. Note, when playing on the Blood and Broken Bones and Death March difficulty levels, meditation does not regenerate vitality. Food and drink can be placed in your consumable slots for using quick uh, during combat. Okay, so let's go ahead and eat something. You can see my quick slots down below. I have five pieces of bread and a little bit of water as well. Ever tell you about this sorcerer I knew? Couldn't stop talking about how useful they are as creatures. Horses, I believe, is what he's mentioning. Witchers? Oh no, I'm sorry. The uh, the, the ghouls is what he's talking about. Witches spend most of their time on the road in search of their next contract. They must trek across wide valleys, climb over high mountain peaks, and trudge through thick bogs. Luckily, 
Geralt can always count on his horse, Roach, to help him in his travels. Alright, I definitely don't have that bound, so I'll have to rebind Roach. Because you can brew potions from their blood? <laughs> no, because by eating rotting corpses, they prevent epidemics. Hmm. Did he know they eat the living as well? No. Really upset him too. His theory collapsed. Oh wow, this is amazing. I'm able to record at 60 frames at 2K a resolution. We could sprint, but I tend to either uh, War's canter. War's not exactly going our way. We have a side. The Northern Realms. Radovid's realms, don't you mean? Tamaria and Edern are no more. Radovid's pledged to restore the old borders as soon as he wins the war. Believe that? <laughs> Gotta believe something. That's what keeps us going. Our Geralt will not take a side, however. We're going to stick with whatever side can give us the most money and we'll try to remain as diplomatically neutral as possible when it comes to the different factions in the game. When I was playing through, I sided with Timeria, actually. We going? Help me! Help! It's gone. Yeah. Come out. Gods, that was close. I was sure I'd end up like my mare. Provided you got lucky. Your horse died quickly, but griffins like to toy with their prey. Eat it. Alive. Piece by piece. Oh. You'd... you'd like a reward, I suppose. One of the survey questions was, do witchers work for free? The answer that you guys chose was that a peasant asking for help is different than a prince. We help the poor for free, but not those who have money. You don't owe us anything. You were in need. We helped. And they call witches heartless. Say they won't lift a finger without pay. They also say mice are born of rotting straw. Back to the trail? Like I said, leads to the main road and ends there, muddled. You seek someone? Yes, a woman. Medium height, long black hair. Seen anyone like that? No. But... There's an inn here in White Orchard. Sole one around. Gets its share of travelers. Perhaps you'll learn something there? Besides, the inn keeps my cousin. Tell her Bram sent you. She'll treat you like family. Not a bad idea. Especially since that wound needs cleaning. Ah, beast barely grazed me. But sure, could use a good rye. Nice and cool, you know, straight from a cellar. Let's go. You can see our current objective up by the dots. They're showing where we need to go in order to reach the uh, town. Right, the game's also telling us that I can just hold down left shift Take without easy. adjusting anything so, on the mouse. A griffin this close to the village. Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest to the mountain, sure, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men, too. We need to watch ourselves in White Orchard. And we should leave as soon as we learn anything. 
Okay, our first town. I'm probably going to stop it here, everybody, to check on the recording and collapse and compress some files down. You are nearing a village. Don't disturb the peace. Remember, town guards and hired watchmen won't tolerate theft and also won't look kindly on you accosting others. Local residents often erect notice boards in your settlements, such as villages and cities. These are marked on your map. Examine them to learn about contracts, work for witchers, and local happenings. Run, Roach. No, no, Roach, don't, don't run. Good, a future defender of the town, I see. Slower. coat of arms, the Temerian lilies. They've a right to hang there. This ain't Temeria no more, old man. It's Nilfgaard now. My arse it is. We've lost freaks. Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. Mm -hmm. Already had the pleasure. Ran into your kinsman, Bram. Bram? How is he? Alive. Sends his regards. Master witches. Food and drink on the house. What can I get you? Dialogue and shops. So, we can go ahead and see what's for sale. We can talk to her about a few things. And we can advance the story by selecting, or rather advance, I guess, the story with at least the innkeeper. By selecting looking for a woman. I like uh, making small... Uh, small chat, is that what I'm saying? Small talk, there we go. Before I move on to the main stuff, so let's uh, talk about the place. Pretty busy place you got. Nation's on the move. Some search for kin, others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest in warmth. So, war's been good for your trade? Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. Lots of travelers on the road trying to either get away from the war or trying to follow it. Hmm. How about that griffin? There a contract on that griffin? Nay, not at the moment. Used to be. As soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the alderman would start a collection or go to the lord for help. Now the alderman don't use the privy without asking the black one's permission first. And seems they hanged the Lord. So no contract. Shame. We might have done something, but not for free. Hmm. The Black Ones are the names for the, I think it's the, um, Tiberian for the forces of N Nilfgaard. Uh, they wear all black armor. Uh, I think they're supposed to be the equivalent of, like, the Romans. They're moving up uh, north and conquering cities as they reach them. Let's see what she has for sale. Show me what you got behind the counter. Buy and sell items using the shop panel. Double click item to purchase it. Escape to close the shop panel. Here's what we have available in our inventory. Items which are dark red like this, the innkeeper or the person who's selling, is not interested in purchasing from us whatsoever. Looks like she's interested in purchasing Wolven Hour, which is a special potion we have. She'll buy a, our single torch. And that seems to be it. 
Items in the game will cost uh, a lot of money, especially in the beginning, more money than we have. But as we proceed onward, we shouldn't have too much trouble, assuming that we loot everything. These are cards for Gwent. I will probably want to purchase most of these if I plan on playing Gwent. She's selling different types of um, alchemy ingredients. Those would be the alcohol and food. Food's actually pretty expensive to purchase this early in the game. Yeah, it's like 25 for each thing of grapes, for example. But it does replenish your vitality for quite some time. We'll just have to make do with the food we've got. I don't think I can afford to purchase any of this at the moment. Might be able to purchase a single apple. But we'll, we'll just pass. Looking for a woman. Raven-haired, violet eyes, dresses in black and white, riding in from Willoughby. And, uh, strange as it sounds, lilac and gooseberries might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. Believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. Plenty of travelers about, though. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Okay, we're done. Oh, now the game's hinting that this will end our dialogue with her. Thanks for everything. Help you bandage that up? Please, I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Yeah. Black one's been out measuring the fields. Let him measure. Better that than burning the harvest. Oh, Drommel. Drommel, you're dumber than a headless cockerel. Why are they marking out them lines, eh? Passing out their patrimony. Give it to their own. All right, everyone. I'm going to check out the recording, and we'll be back. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.